my free masterclass, Understanding Your Trauma, is here for a very limited time only. Oh, Jelly wants to join. What's new? For a very limited time only so that you can really understand the important aspects of somatically healing your body so that you can truly live the life of your dreams. I am not making that sound just like I'm not trying to make that sound wishy-washy. I truly mean that by understanding your trauma and healing your trauma and working with your body, your life will radically change and improve with so much ease. And manifestation will become a really, really easy thing for you because you can easily attract things in. Your vibration, your high vibration is easy to maintain and you are not unconsciously or somatically repelling exactly what it is that you want because you don't feel like worthy or deserving or insert your wound that you have. So if you are interested In this masterclass, I break down so much, including some of the signs and symptoms to be looking for in regards to how your trauma could be hiding behind the curtains. And I also break down some of the most common Uh, like physical manifestations of trauma, for example, TMJ, and what it actually means. So nonetheless, the link to join is below. All you need to do is register with your name and your email, and then you will get access to this free masterclass. Wow, guys. Will someone please tell me how the hell we are in March? Like, how is it March 6th? I do not understand. Um, Anyway, we're here. The year is going by so quickly. I hope that you are having a great year so far and that you feel you feel like you are really showing up for yourself. I really hope you are. So today's episode, we are going into the fundamentals of feminine energy and really what blocks our flow of feminine energy as women. Now, if you're a man that listens to the podcast, I love you. Thank you for being here. Um, This doesn't relate to you because even though you, yes, have feminine energy, I'm talking to women in this episode, but you can, of course, still listen to it to obviously understand women better, to understand your partner better, um, or maybe you listen to it with your partner and you guys can like open up the conversation around what she needs in order to be able to feel like she can flow more in her feminine and how you could support her in that. Now, if you are watching the video, my water is not disgusting. It just has electrolytes in it, um, a bunch of salt. So that's why I wanted to just address that in case anyone's like, what the fuck is in her in her water in her house? Fun fact, actually, all of the water in our house is uh, filtered and our drinking water is double filtered, um, reverse osmosis. So, But it's filtered before the reverse osmosis. So um, it takes out all the minerals. So we have to be very aware of drinking lots of minerals. Otherwise... You drink so much water, like living in this house, and you still feel dehydrated and thirsty. So I try to make sure I'm drinking electrolytes every single day. If you want to know the brand, I use LMNT. I feel like everyone uses LMNT. It's the best one out there. Um, And you can get it in Australia as well, which I feel like is like, oh my God, thank God. Because, sorry to Australians. I mean, I felt this living there. You couldn't get anything in Australia. I'm coming to Australia just in a few weeks, depending on when you listen to this. We're coming in the middle of March. I'm very excited doing my, we're going to get into this episode by the way, but let me just give you a little life update. And if you don't want it, you can just skip past this. Um, we're doing my bachelorette there. Well, one of my bachelorettes, because I have two bachelorettes actually happening. Um, the whole wedding is just like the most untraditional mishmash situation, mostly for me on my side, because I have friends here. And then I also have friends in Australia. So I'm doing one of my bachelorettes in Australia. I have no idea what's being planned, like literally none. I got a voice message from one of my best friends. She's one of my maid of honors. She's my Australian maid of honor. And then I have a US maid of honor. Um, And she kind of told me the outfits that I needed and described them. And it was the most Monica description ever. It was like, I literally wrote it down. She's like, okay, so we need like Italian, South of France, James Bond, like insert some slutty vibes. Um, like out for a picnic, can definitely eat some food in it. Like I actually wrote it down. Wait, I want to find exactly what I wrote down because I was listening to it giggling as I was writing down her description. Hold on. Okay. It was, okay. Fun, party, friendly, James Bond, Italian, Capri, French Riviera, two outfits is what I need. I'm like, and then, so the second outfit, it was just like, you need to be able to party in it and eat in it. Like don't make it too tight where you can't eat heaps of food because we love to eat. And Australian, like Australians know how to get good quality produce. And I'm assuming she's booked like the most beautiful restaurant for us with the best quality food. So, um, anyway, we're doing that in Australia. I'm picking up all of my wedding dresses and I say all of my wedding dresses because I have five dresses. Somebody asked me the other day, we were at my, um, my fiance's, um, and it's a husband, my fiance's, uh, cousin's engagement party. 
And someone there was like, how many dresses do you have? And I said, five. And they were like, five? And I was like, well, we have a four-day wedding. So like, hence five. But yes, I got to pick up five dresses, none of which are going in a suitcase. I actually had a nightmare last night that we were at our wedding and none of my dresses arrived. Like, I put them in the suitcase and they went onto the plane. And then the suitcase got lost and then I was without any clothes or any dresses. And it was like a nightmare. So I had that nightmare last night. Um, Anyway... So I'll be carrying in my hands and so will my fiance, uh, the dresses on the plane and I have to bring all of my pairs of shoes. So fair to say that my, my family will be getting so much food brought to them, like all the Siete chips, all the huge chocolate, like all that good, healthy America, all those good, healthy American snacks that you can't get to Australia because I literally need to bring like so many empty suitcases for the amount of clothing that I will buy when I'm there. If you followed me when I last went there, I literally spent $8,000, I'm not joking, $8,000 on clothing because hand to my heart, Australian designers are like so much better than American designers. I am not trying to shit on Americans. I'm sorry, but Australians just know how to design and they're my kind of taste and they're a vibe and hence all of my wedding dresses are getting made in Australia. So all that to say, I don't even know where I was going with that. We're going to Australia soon. And, um, oh, I was saying about the the food and like Australians don't get anything good. So my parent, my family will be getting a lot of snacks brought to them when we go so that I have then a bunch of empty space to basically just go balls to the wall with shopping in Australia. Okay, let's dive in to today's episode after that little intro um, of the fundamentals of feminine energy. So let me start by going through some of the traits of a woman in her feminine energy. And let me preface firstly by saying that feminine energy is an energy. It's not a look. It's not a way that you dress. It's not any of that. The feminine energy is really an energy that you are encompassing. And you could be technically doing something masculine, like doing your taxes, but you could be doing it in a really feminine way. So I want to also remind you that the whole thing of feminine energy, like I've been doing this for seven years, right? And I, you know, I obviously include in with what I see online and my team and I were having a discussion about this. And I've shared this with you guys in many different ways of just my concern that people just take all of this shit online. They compare themselves to it. They compare themselves to these like conscious relationships and think that they need a man that does all the personal development work. You don't need a man that does all the personal development work. We were talking, my team and I were talking about this this morning. I mean, because when I'm Olivia, my customer service angel is what she is. Like she's a Victoria's secret angel, but for customer service, um, she, and I was saying, or she was saying how one of my, one of her favorite things about me is that I'm like not in a relationship with a, um, really like conscious woo woo into this work guy and how that helps make what I bring to you guys so much more tangible because the vast majority of you, I would argue 99.9% of you are in a relationship with a man that does not know what a fucking chakra is. Are we right? I think we're right. If I asked my fiance, babe, what's a chakra? He'd be like, what? Like he would have, I don't even think he'd be able to come up with like some kind of idea of what a chakra is. He has no idea, not just about the woo woo, but also just in the world of personal development. And I adore that about him. And so I want it, what I want to preface to you guys is that you do, as you step into your feminine energy, please do not think that you need a man that is super aware of like masculine energy, exactly what it means to be in this masculine energy, blah, 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 blah. It's not the case. By you stepping more into your feminine it will support him in being able to have the space to then step more into his masculine as well. Okay. And I'll kind of go in this, go into this a little bit more in this episode, but I wanted to just preface that your feminine energy is whatever you can, you want to make it like be, and you don't need to label it as anything, but it's about that feeling of being at home in yourself. Like when you as a woman have lived in this hyper-masculine energy, which a lot of us have, me included, when we come back into our feminine, it just feels like this, it feels like a coming home. It feels like an exhale. It feels so just like, fucking orgasmic. That's what it feels like. It feels so delicious and nourishing and just like, I want to be here forever in our body. And by being in that space, it gives the energetic space in the relationship or in your dating experience for him to then be in his masculine. The more in your feminine you are, because this is, this is the law of polarity, the more in your feminine you are, the more in his masculine that you're going to be. The more in you, the mass, you're the more, the more that you are in your masculine, the more he's going to be in his feminine, which is why often 
you know, these really hyper masculine women will find themselves constantly attracting in these not so masculine men. The polarity becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. The two of you are like neutral, ew, not a vibe. So the more that you're in your feminine, the more that it's going to allow him to be in his feminine. Okay. It's kind of like the the classic, the, the way to kind of think about it is we all know how, and okay, no, not all of us. If you are five foot seven or five foot eight and above, you know that as a teenager or as a young adult, we would get so annoyed when the five foot four ladies would end up with the six foot six men. We're like, how the fuck is this happening? I need the six foot six. <laughs> I'm the one that's tall. I need to wear heels. Like we've all, maybe not we've all, but like I've experienced that. I know plenty of you have because I've talked to so many of you guys about it. Um, and it's like, we can use that metaphor in relation to feminine energy. It's like, he's so tall, but is attracted to such a petite woman and such a petite woman gets such a tall man. It's like, okay, let's use that in feminine and masculine, right? A really masculine guy is attracted to a really feminine woman. A really feminine woman is attracted to a really, really masculine guy. Now let's remember that you as a woman, if you are still really in your hyper masculine, you might sit here and go, yeah, but Monica, I want a really masculine guy. I am craving that. Now, your want and craving and desire is different to the energy that you're actually putting out. So you may want and crave and desire a really masculine man, but if you're still in your hyper-masculinity, your energy fields and your actions and your behavior, which is what he's then like listening to and feeling and then either being attracted to or repelled by, that is doing the talking for you. So what we want to make sure for you is that what you're wanting, so you're, you're wanting a really masculine man and for a man to lead you, we want to make sure that is then lining up with the energy that you're putting out and the behavior that you're engaging in, the way that you're talking, the way that you are putting yourself out there and just the way that you are engaging, all right? That's the kind of flow on effect of it. So let's start by going into some of the fundamental traits of a feminine woman that is in her feminine energy. Okay, so she feels a lot, right? She's in her body. She's in her emotions. She's able to actually feel her body, whereas a lot of us are very numbed out and disassociated these days, so we actually can't feel a lot. Her heart is open, right? When we have trauma and pain and resentment and distrust and anger and all of these really heavy emotions, we can, which are so valid, we can then close our heart off which limits our magnetism, our radiance, our essence, our aura. And just that like, you know, when we're really in our feminine, we can just magnetize things in with such ease. And you might think, how does she just like, how is she so magnetic? And it's because her heart is also open, right? She is able to receive. A lot of you have told me that you struggle with receiving. I wrote this down as a future podcast episode. One of you messaged me being like, what is up with the fact that I cannot receive? Like I just struggle so much to receive compliments, to receive gifts, to receive any kind of leadership from a man even. If we, if we have our heart closed and it's closed because of pain from the past that has not been healed and you know, maybe we've healed the past, but we are, we are missing that integration and the embodiment. So we're not able to actually then change for the future. We're still living in this past hurt and we're still worried that the past is going to become our future. So the heartbreak we experienced in our past, we don't want it to become our future, but we're worried about that. That can then close off our heart as well. She is magnetic, like I was just saying, and really just attracts people to her. She sucks them in with her radiance. And because of her magnetism, she manifests things with ease, right? That ability to just say what you want and it come into your life, that really happens when you are super aligned with yourself. I did an episode on what actually is alignment. I would highly recommend that you listen to that. And for any of the men, it doesn't mean that you need to become a woman or be really in your feminine to manifest. It's actually about being in alignment. So for a man to manifest with ease, it would be him really being in his masculine energy because that is so magnetic to a feminine woman, right? That is so magnetic also to other men because it's a man fully in his power. It's a man that is fully in his radiance, his essence. He's fully aligned with himself. He's fully backing himself. He's in his truth. So when a person is just in their truth and in alignment with themselves and their essence and their purpose and their and just them as a human being, whether that's you're a feminine woman or whether that's a masculine man, you then 
are magnetic. You are alluring. You you are radiant. People look at you, right? And not even just in a not in a sexual way. They probably do too. But they just look at you as you're crossing the street. It's just like there's something about that person, and that something about that person is that piece of alignment, which men can become like men can become aligned and women become can become aligned. How you become aligned, I talked about in that episode. And really, the fundamental piece is healing all of the shit that has made you become unaligned with yourself and maybe not even feel safe to be fully who you actually know you can be and who you want to be and who you desire to be. Um, another kind of a uh, trait of a feminine woman. She lets her man leads and her man leads her without her having to ask because of that energy flow of the polarity. She can obviously let go and she can receive in the bedroom with such yumminess because her body feels safe to let go. She feels safe in her body. Part of also being in your feminine, which I'll kind of go into in a second, is really having a deep sense of self-respect, right? A queen doesn't just get taken advantage of. A queen says no when she means no. A queen puts her foot down. She, she draws boundaries. And I've done a few, I've, I've done a few uh, Instagram posts for you guys on this, but the most important thing in order for you to actually be in your feminine is to feel safe to be in your feminine because it is a more vulnerable place to be in as a woman, which is why a lot of us just default into hyper masculinity. We think that that is giving us the safety that we want, but really that safety comes from internally. It is boundaries. It is you actually being able to follow through with the boundary rather than just think of the boundary, but then continue to let someone walk all over it. So if you're not feeling safe in the bedroom, if you're struggling to have an orgasm, if you're struggling to feel pleasure, it's not because you're broken or because you can't. It's most likely because you don't actually feel fully safe. Now that could be because of the partnership that you're in, but it also could be because of your own stuff. He could be doing all of the right things, but you are struggling to let yourself go and to let yourself receive. So that is something that you then need to work on. It's not a him problem. And a lot of people, especially when it comes to the feminine and masculine, they can kind of deflect of like, well, it's your job to make me feel safe. It's your job to get me to be my feminine. Well, you're not leading well enough. We have to remember that so much in life, even when it comes to manifestation, right? Where we're like literally communicating with the universe, like not even a physical being, so much is 50-50. And especially in relationships, we have to remember that even if there's a problem in a relationship, as hard as it is to recognize this, you are part of the problem, right? Even if like it's a it's an extreme example, like they've cheated, well, what allowed that to happen? And I'm not then saying that you deserve that. I'm saying there is a part that you had to play, that you had to play in that, right? You did play a part in that, whether it was not seeing him, whether it was not meeting his needs, whether it was the fact that you were always emasculating him, or if she cheated on you, was it that you were not making her feel safe? Was it that you were not listening to her needs and giving her the kind of intimacy that she gets, that she needs as a woman? You were just, you know, treating her like a man, but you're actually with a woman. Obviously, there's so many different factors that can go into it, but we have a role to play in partnership with the other person's behavior. Now, obviously, you know, there's exceptions to the rule, but let's just remember that. Let's remember that, okay? Um, another big one is that she's not burnt out at the end of the week. If you are burnt out at the end of every single week, that tells me that there is a lack of feminine energy in your life day to day. That doesn't mean that you now need to like quit your job and, you know, just float around like a fairy in garden all day. That's not what I'm saying at all. You can go to work. You can do a technically masculine job. Remember that the way that you do something is everything. So you can technically be doing a masculine job, but what do you do when you come home? How do you behave when you come home? Are you running these cycles in the background of your body? of it doesn't feel safe to be a woman, it doesn't feel safe to be a woman, it doesn't feel safe to be my feminine, I can't let go, I can't let go. Like what unconscious cycles are running in the background that you are blissfully or not so blissfully unaware of? Guys, if you haven't heard the good news, you're about to hear it, you need to focus, like stop driving, turn the oven off, whatever it is that you're doing, like put the child down. The last remaining tickets 
for my New York and Paris immersions this year are here. And when I say the last remaining tickets, I'm talking you can hold the amount of of tickets that we have in your hot little hands, right? Count your fingers. You get the gist. So what is important for you to understand is that you do not want to be sitting and procrastinating on this. You've probably heard me talk about the immersion before. And if you haven't, you need to quickly go to the immersion website page and watch all of the videos there because that website page is full of resources. You need to ask if you don't already have for the open house video so that you can really kind of get a behind the scenes look at what the actually what the immersion entails and get a bunch of questions answered. And you need to send us an email with any questions that you have before you make this life-changing decision that you will be thankful for for the rest of your life. I'm talking in three years' time. You'll still be sending me a message saying thank you. I'm telling you because this is what happens all the time. I still have you message me, like some of you listening, message me saying, I still think about XYZ immersion in this place. I'm still friends with this person. I'm still like, that was the best thing I ever did for myself, et cetera, et cetera. Just do yourself a favor read the website, read the testimonials, watch the testimonial videos, watch the vlog that we did of the behind the scenes of the Melbourne one from last year, watch the promo video, and then don't think, feel with your heart, trust your intuition. This is an event that like you really can't be logical about. If you watch the testimonial videos, we've included some of the pieces, but like every single woman that sat down said this, I didn't really know why I needed to come. I didn't have like a really clear idea of what I I wanted to work on. I was super scared about coming, but I just had such a pull and I trusted that. And it's only when they finished the event, they were like, that's what I wanted. That's what I had to get out of it. But often we don't even know what we need until we get it. How many of us in our lives don't even know what we need until we actually get it? So let's use those times as the reminder to trust our intuition to remember that we cannot be always making logical decisions, especially when we are trying to make really expansive decisions because things don't make sense. Time doesn't make sense. Manifestation doesn't always make sense. But if you feel that niggle, don't worry about time. Stop worrying about money. You can make it happen. As Tony Robbins says, it's never a lack of resources. It is a lack of of resourcefulness. I like to use this example. If you dropped your iPhone or your Samsung, like those people that are Samsung, like I don't get it, but whatever. If you dropped it down the toilet, would you go and wait six months before you bought a new one? No, you would run run straight to the Apple, Apple store. You'd probably be crying. You'd run straight to the Apple, to the Apple store and you would go and buy a new iPhone. Isn't it interesting that we will go and buy an $1,000 phone, or however much they cost these days, we will go and buy a $1,000 phone, a phone, right? That really actually causes us a lot of stress, but we will second guess doing something that would get rid of the thoughts, the feelings, the habits, the experiences that drive us up the wall, that haunt us, that we're exhausted about, whatever it is, like insert your experience. Isn't that interesting? Huh? So let's remember, value ourselves like we would value our children. If our children needed help, we would throw money at whatever problem that they had because we want to help them. We would be there. We would listen. We would see them. We would trust them. We would trust their needs. Let's start doing that for ourselves this year. Hey, okay. So final tickets, final, final, final tickets. Once these are gone, they are gone. And remember everyone, I don't know if I'm doing another event next year. I am planning to be pregnant. Now, of course, like we might decide actually want to wait. I don't know what's happening. We have what's going on with the book and like, la, la, la. But I am planning at this stage to be pregnant by the end of this year, if not next year. And so what that means is that there is a, very, let's, I don't want to say high, but like there is a high kind of likelihood that I won't actually be doing an event next year. And if you watched my Understanding Trauma Healing Masterclass, I kind of talked about this at the very end of the masterclass on why, if you've read my emails, you would also know why. Um, To put it really short, these are like 14, 16 hour days. They are so energetically demanding on my body. I'm obviously looking after all of you guys. I really am very much integrity with like my ethics and morals. And I might you know, when I'm actually pregnant, depending how far along I am. And then when we were planning to do the event, I might actually be like, I don't feel a hundred percent confident in being able to serve every single one of you to your, to my full capacity because I'm, you know, X amount of months pregnant. We just don't know. So with all that being said, of course, I am hoping that I can do another one this next year because I love, love, love in person. But I also need to remember that I have no control 
over this experience and I'm excited for that. But it also means that you guys need to remember that I have no control over this experience. And as much as I can do absolutely everything and I'm doing absolutely everything to set myself up for success, at the end of the day, I have to trust what's right for me in that moment. And that might mean I can't do in person next year. So please don't think that you can come to next year's event because there may not be a next year event or even the year after because they don't have a toddler. So we don't know. Well, not, not a toddler, but a baby. Not a toddler. That's a very fast growing toddler. Um, a baby. Uh, I'll have a baby. So we just don't know, right? My, my life is progressing in the most beautiful ways. And that really means, and one of my friends told me this a few years ago, and then I did a post on it actually of like, take the opportunity now. I have one-on-one space now. I'm doing one-on-one now. Well, actually, I don't know whether I have one-on-one space now. Depending on when you listen to this, I probably don't. Right now, at this point in time, I am enrolling for July, which is in five months. Um, so I book very hard, far ahead. But what I'm saying is I... I may not be doing one-on-one for much longer. I may not have the same amount of capacity to take on the same amount of clients. I may not be doing my programs as live as they are right now. We just don't know. So please, please, please take these opportunities um, as they come. Roll with your heart's desires and start to practice trusting yourself because your intuition and your heart's desires are very safe things for you to trust. Okay, let's get back into the episode. And then the last one that I want to share with you, and there are so many more that we can go into, right? Like she's receptive, she can surrender, like we can go into a million more. Um, I wanted to give you guys some different ones that you can't just like look up on Google. Um, is that she has inner peace in her mind and her body, right? Like I said to you guys before, that kind of exhale feeling of coming home, that is that embodiment feeling of being in your feminine, right? So let's remember that as a woman, and I'm going to do kind of an episode on this in regards to money. And how just being a woman can result in wounding around different things, including receiving, including letting go, including money. Because we have to remember that we didn't always have the level of safety that we have now in our environment, right? The divine feminine has really gone through its moments of being shamed, burned, suppressed. And it's also gone through the moments of being praised, wanted, desired, and like literally like locked away because she's so sexual and because she's so magnetic, no other man can look at her, right? And, you know, there's two sides to that coin. Like one, wow, like that's how <laughs> that's how much men were like, she is the fucking queen. But then also like, okay, we didn't need to be locked away for it. My point is that the divine feminine has gone through all of these different moments. And so for a lot of us, we're not just healing what it means to be a woman now. We're also healing what was passed down from our mums, which was then passed down, obviously, from our grandma to her, which then got passed on to us. What was passed on from our great grandma to our grandma to our mum to that us. We have we're not just healing our lineage, like our trauma, we're also healing that generational trauma. And let's not confuse, you know, healing generational trauma of you know, this is the longest process can take you five fucking years, blah, blah, blah. Healing generational trauma. I think we've overcomplicated it because it's like kind of a trendy thing to say. Healing generational trauma means you heal you, right? It means that you are healing all of the messaging, the blueprints, the programming that you were given. And that is, you know, just in your family dynamic and in that family constellation, you are healing all of that shit so that when you then give birth to your children and when you raise a family, that doesn't get passed on to your kids. So something like Queen Alchemy or the immersion, like that is then breaking the generational trauma. You don't need to make it like some, I think a lot of people can sometimes make trauma healing or healing generational trauma, this big fucking thing. And it just allows them to kind of stay more in the generational trauma and more in the victimhood. Um, cause it's like, oh, well, this isn't mine. It's my great grandma. That's just like, okay, you can heal that. Like you have the power as a human being and as a very spiritual human being, because we are not just like animals on this earth. We are way more than that as humans, which is just magical. You have the power to ensure that you break that cycle for your children, but also for yourself. Okay. So one thing is for sure though, I do want to share with you is that when you heal, like kind of on this note, when you heal your physical, your emotional, your energetic, and your mental body, we have all of these different bodies, right? We have our physical body. Then we have an emotional body. We have an energetic body and we have a mental body. When you heal all of these different bodies within yourself, you come into alignment. And then when you're in alignment, like I talk about in that episode, when you're in alignment, From here, you are tapped into your essence. You are living on purpose. You are deeply happy and you feel at home with yourself, right? If you are struggling to find your purpose, start by finding you. 
stop looking. Stop looking. I did an episode maybe a year and a half ago now, can't remember, on like finding your purpose. And I was just thinking the other day I should do like another one for you guys and maybe leave a question box on Instagram to answer some questions. But what I will say really quickly on this note is if you are looking for your purpose, stop looking. Because you are only, when you are looking for your purpose, like literally looking, you are only seeing what you know. You are only, listen to that, you are only seeing what you know. You are only seeing what you've experienced before in the past. Because there are so many more things happening in the world that you aren't seeing because you're, you don't know about them. You don't know what you're looking for. And so because you don't know what you're looking for, your reticular activating system is focused on what you're telling it to focus on. And you are trying to find something that you've never seen before. You don't know what it is. So if you are looking, you are not going to find it. If you stop looking, then you find it. If you are looking, your reticular activating system is filtering in what it thinks is important and filtering out what it doesn't think important. So frankly, you could be filtering out your exact fucking purpose because you don't know what it is, right? And you think that by looking, you'll find it faster. And you think that by looking, you won't miss it. But actually the opposite is true. If you stop looking and if you stop obsessing about it, you are then open to seeing more because you're not pigeonholing yourself. You're open to seeing more. And then by being open to seeing more, then you see more. Then you see your purpose. Then it lands. And trust me when I say you ain't going to miss it. But I also want for anyone that is fine, is trying to look for their purpose. I also want you to know your purpose isn't going to drop in your lap like a bird doing a shit. That's not what happens with you finding your purpose. You finding your purpose is a series of events that happens over a period of time. Me, this, I obviously am very much living my purpose. This shit didn't just like land on my lap one morning. This was a series of events. And the series of events started with making recipes in my cousin's London apartment and posting them on Snapchat for my friends that wanted to know what was in my dinners. That's how this started. One thing led to another and now we are here. It started from Snapchat. Like cringe. <laughs> but also, but also not. I do not use Snapchat anymore. I can't believe people still use Snapchat, by the way. I'm like, that's still a fucking thing. I mean, I used it in like the end of high school and like, yeah, I could never, if my life depended on it, get back on that app. Anyway, that was a total side note, but I hope that was helpful for those of you that are struggling to find your purpose. So to get to your purpose, to get to that place where you are, um, where you have healed your physical, your energetic, your emotional and mental body, and then been able to tap into alignment and been able to feel your essence in order to get there, you need to get rid of anything and everything that is blocking you. What is holding you back? What is limiting your expression and your expansion? That's what you have to get rid of. And the answer isn't cut your family off necessarily. That could be the answer, but it's also not the answer, right? You, you can have so much healing and still deal with your toxic family, right? That's up to you, obviously, of whether you want to keep them around. But one thing I do worry about in personal development these days is like anyone that's toxic, just cut them off. And it's like, okay, can we have a little bit discernment about that? And also you have the ability as a adult, to stay regulated and to not let them affect you. Now that happens, that reality of I can go to Christmas lunch and not end up in tears. That reality is only possible when you have done not just healing work, but you've done integration and embodiment. I I've talked about these three components of my work. It's not just healing. It's healing, integration, embodiment. You have to have those three pieces in order to then become, as I say, her healing, integration, embodiment, right? So if you just do energy healing, okay, you've done healing, or if you've done therapy, or if you've done somatic healing, you've done healing, but has that person given you really tangible integration? Probably not. And then really tangible embodiment. And have they, have they, has the integration allowed you to get to embodiment? That's often the missing piece. People then get given, people can skip the healing even and just jump to like being given all these tools. Well, the tools doesn't necessarily lead to healing, right? And how good are these tools? Deep breathing doesn't necessarily give you healing. What if you no longer were triggered in those situations? That's fucking healing. That's integration. That's embodiment, right? What's really awesome is when you don't even need the fucking tools, right? Because it's your new way of being is not having them affect you. 
Okay, another tangent. We're not going to go down it. Stay on track, Monica. So I want you to ask yourself, are you feeling inner peace? Are you feeling inner peace? Do you feel that you have freedom of expression? Are you letting childhood and social programming run your life? Because if you've answered that you don't feel inner peace, you don't feel like you have a freedom of expression and you are letting, you know, childhood, parental programming, social programming, whatever it is, run your life. You don't need to live that way any longer. I know for a lot of us, it can feel like, but how? If you've listened to all of my episodes, then you know how. And if you haven't, then go to the podcast directory and do yourself a favor and start to really learn and also make sure as another thing, whilst it's available, you do my understanding your trauma healing free, completely free masterclass. It was done in the most beautiful, beautiful Italian like vineyard. Literally, it was a house we were in on a vineyard in California, just outside of LA. It was absolutely stunning. The bougiest, most wealthy, expansive vibes you could possibly imagine. So even if you just want to get the vibes, like watch the masterclass because it's amazing. And you will also learn a hell of a lot about yourself and feel like you know the direction that you can start to step in for your healing journey. So when it comes to getting into your feminine so that he can be in his masculine, right? So when it comes to getting into your feminine, not just for your own benefit, but so he can get into his masculine, there are multiple layers to it. It's not just like a quick and simple thing. And I did an episode um, that was really good. It was kind of like I touched on a bunch of different things. It was a what would Monica do, which is WWMD. And then it was like, if he's not, what was it? It was like, what would Monica do? Like if he's not changing or if he's not leading and you've tried everything, we'll put that one in the link below as well. But that would be a really great episode for some of you guys to listen to because even if you're like, oh, I haven't even tried to get him to lead, it could still be a good one because I talk about a few different things. And one of them is that if he can feel that there is no space for him to be in as masculine, he won't be in as masculine. It doesn't matter if you're wearing a cute dress or dressing in a certain way. If you are not energetically in your feminine and he does not feel like there is actually space, because a man needs space, energetic and physical. If he doesn't feel like there is space to rise into his masculine, to lead you, if he doesn't feel like his leadership is going to be received by you, if he feels like if he tries, if he feels like, oh, I'm going to try to lead, but she's going to shut me down because she won't like it, or she's going to revert into a control freak, then he's not going to lead. Let's also remember for a lot of, you know, our men, unfortunately, we've spent our whole relationship emasculating them, not letting them lead. We And now, we're, now only now, 10 years in or whatever, we are trying to change the polarity. Is it possible? Absolutely. But it's not going to happen overnight. And you need to be really committed to being patient because men are so patient with us, being patient and being really uh, committed to the feminine energy work. It doesn't mean being a doormat. It does not mean being a doormat. It does not mean saying yes to everything. It does not mean never saying no. It does not mean just like submitting to something that you don't want to submit to. Absolutely not. There is so much that goes into this, but what's important is your commitment in connect, reconnecting with your sense of I'm home. I am me, right? I know what my desires are. I know how to communicate myself, communicate myself, communicate. I don't even know where, where myself came in. I know how to communicate in a regulated way and in a constructive way. That is what important. That's what's important. So if you're still, you know, if you're wearing a cute dress, but you still emasculate him, you aren't being in your feminine. You might look feminine, but your feminine energy isn't actually there. What many people can confuse when they're getting into trying to tap into their feminine energy and what I really try to make as a big differentiating factor in my work is that your feminine energy is not about doing certain things, adding things onto a plate, changing yourself, acting in a certain way, manipulating men, like changing your communication in a way that's not authentic to you, but that's quote unquote feminine. That's not what you need to do in order to be in your feminine essence for the rest of your life in an easy, sustainable, and most most importantly, authentic way. If someone teaches you to just 
type this text or just say this thing, communicate in this exact thing. And it's like not actually authentic to you. It's going to last three weeks. Then you're going to be like, fuck this, right? We want to make sure that you are cultivating your own flavor of the feminine. You're becoming your own version of the feminine, not just mimicking somebody else's version of the feminine, you're stepping into your own leadership and your own authenticity, right? So being in your feminine, from my perspective and the way that I really teach it and he and help you guys heal with all of this and embody this is more, it's about, what's wrong with my fucking words right now? It's more about letting go of the things that took you out of that equilibrium, not adding in a pile of more things, not putting you further into in authenticity and trying to be somebody else. So exa- so an example of some things that um, you might need to work on letting go of could be distrust from men, of men, sorry, distrust of men, having to prove your worth by being hyper-independent, your masculine armor around you, not accepting help, not receiving, always being right and having to be in control all the time. Those are some things that you might need to start letting go of. And what I want to preface is, I'm not saying and I'm not expecting you to just be like, all right, okay, I've let go of them. Done. I'm a new fucking woman. Like, listen to the podcast. Everything's changed. Maybe, maybe, maybe for some of you, you can be like, you know what? Yeah, I I can just let go of always needing to be right. I can just let go of always needing to be in control. Amazing. For some of you, the need to be in control is not just like something that you decided one day in your mind and you just like let go of, like it's just floating out of the window. For some of you, that need to be in control is actually a safety mechanism. It's a protection. It's, it's a protective mechanism. It is literally the thing that allows you to feel somewhat safe because you didn't have any sense of control when you were a kid and maybe you were heavily abused or manipulated or rejected or not loved or whatever it is. And so you are now trying to get control as an adult because that is your trauma response and you aren't wrong for that at all. Your body and, and, and your nervous system is doing exactly what it's meant to do. It's meant to protect itself, right? So you just having this thought of like, oh, I need to release control and then not being able to do it can then make you make a lot of women feel like they're failing. It's so hard to be in my feminine. I'm failing at being in my feminine, which is why I have this really important component in my business of the trauma healing, because it would be so wrong for me to just say, oh, you know, just let go of being in control all the time when I know that's so much harder said than done for a lot of women. But when you heal the actual root like uh, issue, the root trauma, the root wound and fear and uh, source of stress then releasing control becomes effortless. It just becomes your new norm. You don't want to be in control. You feel safe in surrender. So let's just remember all of that with all of the things that I just said, you know, this is what you need. These are some examples of what you need to let go of. I'm not just saying that you can just let them fly out the window and be done with it. I'm very aware. And that's why I do what I do that some much deeper healing might need to go on in order for you to be able to make that quick decision in that moment of, oh, let go of control, let go of control. Yep. Okay. I can let go of control. I'm back in to like that state of easy surrender. All right. So to wrap this kind of little thing up that I was just saying, I want you to know, I really want you to know, you already know how to be in your feminine. You already know how to be in your feminine because as a woman, Being in our feminine is home. It feels like home, right? So your feminine codes, your body's ability to be feminine is very much there. It's just under a pile of rubble. It's under a pile of trauma responses. It's under a pile of fear and wounds and things that have happened in the past that have made it feel unsafe for that part of you to be the the source of your expression and where you kind of are always rooted into, So because of that, hence I'm saying, don't just go and do a pile of things to be feminine. Don't just like read a book and try and implement feminine communication. That's not going to fucking last if you have all of this rubble on top of you. Let's start by clearing all of the rubble first, clearing all of that shit, clearing the wounds, blah, 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 clearing all of that. And then that feminine communication, effortless, that letting him lead, like, can do it in my sleep. That ability to just tap into unconditional love and feel my body's emotions and be really connected to my sensuality. Like what is it not to be connected? Like that's then where you shift into this place of you don't even have to try. This is your new place of 
oneness in your body. You don't even have to try. So everyone, I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope that you guys loved me talking a bit about the fundamentals of feminine energy. Obviously, we could go into this for absolute days. If you are wanting to start your journey on connecting in your feminine and in the Monica way, and I say the Monica way in the way of like really understanding the trauma aspect of it all and the safety aspect, which is super essential for our bodies, my little program, Empoweredly Submissive, is a really, really great place to start. Um, this is a program that I made the end, end of last year, end of last year. So it's fairly new. And I made this program as my new kind of beginner bundle, basically taking in everything that I know people need as that beginning point after doing this for seven years. And I've put that in a program. It's $149. So if you want to start with that, that would be a really great place to start. However, if you want to jump straight into something a lot deeper and more immersive, you've got my program, Queen Alchemy, and you've also got my immersion coming up as well. For those of you that have done the trauma healing, maybe you've done the immersion before, you've done Queen Alchemy before, her, my program, her, yay, is opening back up at the beginning of April. So that would be a really great place for you to go deeper into that feminine embodiment, especially for us really busy women that want to be able to juggle it all and do it all. That is my program, her. Okay. I'm going to love you and leave you all. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram so that you can make sure that you are checking out my stories of whatever the fuck's going to happen for my bachelorette weekend, because I am so posting that shit on my stories because I cannot fucking wait I just know the best thing in the world has been planned. My friend sent me a voice message the other day and she was like, if you don't literally pass the fuck out and puke everywhere, when you see what I've done, I am disowning you as a friend. And I was like, okay, I need to learn how to fake vomit. (laughs) I don't know how. Okay. I'm going to see you guys in the next episode. Have a lovely rest of your day.